Tonight, John Ankerberg examines the views of secular humanism and compares them with the views of Orthodox Christianity. John's guest representing secular humanism is Dr. Paul Kurtz, author of The Humanist Manifesto II and A Secular Humanist Declaration. Dr. Kurtz is also the editor of The Free Inquiry, the main secular humanist magazine in America. He is also professor of philosophy at State University of New York at Buffalo. John's second guest is Dr. Norman Geisler, professor of philosophy and theology at Dallas Theological Seminary. Dr. Geisler is the author of more than 20 books on philosophy and theology, including the book, Is Man the Measure? An Evaluation of Contemporary Secular Humanism. In program one, both sides will discuss, does today's scientific evidence for the origin of the universe point people to secular humanism or biblical Christianity? In program two, which view best encompasses the scientific evidence for the origin of first life on the earth? In program three, are secular humanists threatening the academic freedom of American schools when they advocate laws that will only allow teachers to present secular humanist views when they forbid teachers to present scientific facts that might disprove humanist theories? In program four, are secular humanists right or wrong in stating there is insufficient evidence that Jesus Christ is God? In program five, can the secular humanist rationally justify why he is a moral person when he does not believe God exists? And in program six and seven, both sides will respond to questions from the audience. We invite you to hear these discussions. Welcome. We're talking about secular humanism, and my guests tonight are Dr. Paul Kurtz, the man who drafted the Humanist Manifesto II and a Secular Humanist Declaration. He's also the editor of the main secular humanist magazine in America, entitled Free Inquiry, and he's professor of philosophy at the State University of New York at Buffalo. Also, Dr. Norman Geisler, Christian uh, scholar, uh, who is a professor at Dallas Theological Seminary and the author of many books on philosophy and theology. Uh, we're getting down to questions in the, from the audience, but I'd like to start you off uh, on one that we haven't approached anywhere before, and that is the fact that if uh, you do leave out God, as the Humanist Manifesto suggests that man, modern man ought to do, it seems like you have a real tough problem motivating anybody. And I know you've written a book on that, but let me see if I can uh, outline it here. And that is that uh, to motivate people, for example, let me just give you one of the things that you say in the Manifesto too. You say, the commitment to all humankind is the highest commitment of which we are capable. Uh, but the question is, what's the motivation for a person to commit himself to all of mankind when this is true? Since a person's life in this world, according to the secular humanist philosophy, is his basic tangible value. Any action which threatens or does not advance this possession would seem to be irrational. Why should I ever set any moral obligation above the ends that serve my own self-interest? How could anybody challenge me to perform something self-sacrificing ever if I believe that I am the product of chance plus time plus the impersonal and I got here by accident, and all that there is is my existence. Why should I care about anything else, Paul? Well, I teach moral philosophy at the university. This is the basic question of Western ethics. Humanism is the oldest intellectual tradition in Western civilization. It goes back to the Greeks and the Romans through the Renaissance up to the development of modern science to the present. And one of the basic themes is, is this question of moral obligation. And the great philosophers from Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, Kant, John Stuart Mill down to the present have raised that question over and over again. I think life is meaningful, that it's full of adventure and goals and plans, that uh, human beings could lead a significant life here and now and be concerned with human justice, the world community, and other fellow men and women on this planet without necessarily believing in God. So it's a mistake to think that only those people who believe a certain religion are moral, when indeed the whole history of the West and of other civilizations indicates so then, that then other Paul, people have had other moral purposes. I, I understand where you're life. coming from. I don't believe it, but I understand it. And, and let me see how you would argue then with somebody who take the opposite position. The French uh, philosopher, uh, Julien Offray de Lemaitre, put it this way. Let us conclude boldly then 
you know, using uh, that we are an accident here, chance plus time plus the impersonal, and voila, here we are. Let us conclude boldly under that kind of a system that man is a machine and that in the whole universe there is but a single substance with various modifications. Now, if man is a machine who's here by accident, there was no intelligence that got him here. There was no reason for him to be here. He just got here. He is as valuable as one of the Supreme Court uh, justices said. There is no difference between a man, a baboon, and a rock and a, and a drop of water because they all got here the same way. And there's no reason for them to get here except by accident they all showed up. So now how do you motivate that person? I don't know who the Supreme Court justice who said that, but you must surely be quoting him out of context. In a, but I do find human beings are different than rocks and baboons. Uh, we, we've created human civilization. We believe in the arts. We believe uh, in uh, creating a good society. We're, uh, we're, we're motivated by science and literature, by human, uh, by shared experience, by the moral decencies. Uh, it's not necessarily true that the only people who are moral and fulfill the good life for the people who accept a, a specific uh, religious point of view. I think life is very meaningful and the plan and project of man is to create the good life. It's an adventure. It's full of joy. Here's what and Oliver many Wendell of Holmes people have found the same thing. Here's what Oliver Wendell Holmes actually said, uh, Supreme Court Justice from 1902 to 1932 said, I see no reason for attributing to man a significant difference in kind from that which belongs to a baboon or a grain of sand. I believe that our personality is a cosmic ganglion. Just as when certain rays meet and cross, there is white light at the meeting point, that is all. Well, human personality, yes, I believe human personality is cherished, it's precious. I believe in human uh, individuality and creativity. What? And these are, and, and men and women have dreamed and believed in this throughout what? the whole history of humankind. Okay. And, they, and they've built cities and they've climbed mountains and they've explored the universe and they've developed poetry and art and music. What's the problem? I mean, that's all part of the adventure of living. Without worrying about salvation, about the afterlife, or, or, or without only preparing for what's going to happen after you die, live here and now. That's a secular morality. Okay. Live here and now and create the so, good life. So man doesn't need God any anyway. while. There, there's really no need he has for God. Well, I think God is invented in the image of man. If lions had God, they would be lion-like in character. Some people apparently think that they need religious belief and need God. I don't. I think I can lead, lead, uh, lead the good life without that myth. Dr. Geisler, do you uh, agree with that? Well, I agree with Paul that you can be moral without being religious, and you can be moral without believing in God. The problem is you can't justify being moral. Uh, let me illustrate that. Uh, many humanists have many wonderful values, including uh, Paul. They're for tolerance. They're for freedom. They're for peace in the world. They're against Hitler. They're against the Holocaust. You know, they have many wonderful values. So they believe in moral prescriptions. The problem is, how can you have an absolute moral prescription, or even an ultimate moral prescription, anything worthy of committing yourself to as a religion, as many humanists believe it is, if you don't have an ultimate moral prescriber? You don't have laws without legislators and prescriptions without prescribers. And yet the very same humanists who, who really make an ultimate commitment to these moral principles don't believe there's an ultimate prescriber to make the moral principles possible. So they can believe in them without there being a God, but they can't justify believing them without there being a God. On the so you're contrary, saying they're illogical at that point, then irrational. Yes. Well, well, Norman, you know the philosophers have debated this point for 2,500 years, and they disagree with you on that point. They talk about the autonomy of ethics. Ethics grows out of human experience. There is a development of moral awareness, moral appreciation, a moral conscience. You can test moral judgments by their consequences in human life. I mean, there is such a thing as moral wisdom and moral growth. I don't see where you have to bring in but some Paul, outside force to so support didn't, this. Didn't G.E. Moore in the naturalistic fallacy prove that just what you're saying isn't possible to come up with an ultimate? Well, uh, I, I don't know that you need an ultimate. I wouldn't say that ethics is derived from an ultimate principle. I do think that there are moral principles that I believe in. They're general moral principles, and they grow, grow out of human experience and human life. Okay, so then, if, and you, they don't, can if be you don't have an ultimate, if you don't have an absolute, how would you argue with Hitler, who said what we really need to do is get rid of five million Jews? Well, I think, of course, that Hitler was wrong, and I'm against uh, genocide. Uh, talking when I, but on uh, what basis, Paul, if there's no absolutes? 
uh, because of the horrible consequences of cruelty and terror and, and murder of innocent human beings. One doesn't need absolutes to oppose that. But Marquis de Sade uh, took uh, the evolutionary theory and said, if the strongest survived, then I'll go around and beat women. So there we got sadism out of that. And he was absolutely logical according to your philosophy. He Why wasn't is he logical. Wrong? No, not, not at all. Of course, I reject that. But you know, in the name of God, men and women have created infamies and they've, cre and, uh, and they've performed every kind of cruelty. If you believe with the fatherhood of God, if you believe in the fatherhood of God, as the Mohammedans, you can believe in polygamy. They believe in the fatherhood of God. Or the, or the Mormons believed in the fatherhood of God and believed in uh, But you in see, I can see you their, can can see their motivation. The they're, they're wrong in their belief, but I can see their motivation having an ultimate reference point. But I don't see any reference point well, but for the point what you're is, saying. Uh, you take the religious point of view. You can take the religious point of view, and people have deduced exactly opposite principles. Christians believe in abortion and they're against abortion in the name of God. Okay, they but believe they... in divorce and they're against divorce. Morality, it seems to me, is a data of human experience that should be examined in its own terms without presupposing these assumptions. Okay, Norman, you just got done with a, uh, a great research project on the area of abortion. Let's speak and use that as an example. The area of abortion, some Christians agree and disagree. What would you say? Well, here's a good example that I think if a humanist were truly humanist, he'd be pro-life because we know medically life begins at conception. There's no medical doubt about the fact that fertilized ovum is a 100% genetic human being. Its sex is determined. There's no doubt about the fact that the babies that are being killed today with fingerprints, heartbeat, blood type, full, fully function are human beings. And I think the humanists someday are going to sit around in smoke-filled rooms and say to themselves, we shouldn't have let those evangelicals grab that pro-life thing. We're humanists. We're for human life. And yet we're only for it after it begins at birth, not after it begins at conception. I think the travesty, Hitler only killed 6 million Jews. We've killed 18 million unborn human beings in America in the last 13 years. I think humanists ought to all repent and get on the pro-life side like Bernard Nathanson, who is a Jewish atheist, did and wrote a book aborting America. After he had personally killed 60,000 of them, he got dehumanized because that moral principles finally got through to him, a moral absolute came through to him and he said this is morally wrong. Norman, on this point, there are liberal Christians and liberal Jews and liberal Catholics indeed who don't agree with you on abortion and do not believe uh, that the woman should not have freedom of choice. My point was simply that even if you believe in God, there are differences of opinion in the, in the moral domain and believe in conviction that, uh, that uh, a human personality does not begin until later. Now, I don't think that abortion should be resorted to as a method of birth control. I think it ought to be a reflective decision of a woman. On the other hand, I wouldn't deny her uh, the right of free choice but, but at Paul, some point after you, you base your process. beliefs as a humanist on scientific evidence it's not a matter of religious belief i don't i'm not concerned about their religious belief the scientific facts are that they're human from the point of conception The scientific facts are that they're human from the point of conception. So I don't think somebody's religious belief should be imposed upon these innocent human beings. They have a right to their belief, but they don't have a right to kill innocent well, human beings. Well, I thought beings. you were drawing this on the basis, I thought that you were arguing against abortion on religious ground. You're now no, doing it on science. on moral, on factual grounds. Independent Science, of, of religion. That's okay, right. I don't Scientifically, disagree. Scientifically, it's a okay. human being. Okay, that's my point, that you can argue moral uh, questions independent of religion. There's an autonomy of, of, uh, of, uh, of moral decision making. Well, but on, in regard to abortion, uh, I don't think John did, but in regard to abortion, uh, Norman, on this point, uh, I think that what you have at conception is a fetus or a conceptus and not uh, a living human being or a living human, uh, not a human personality but that, but see, which develop, not a human personality. But personality which is a philosophical, religious term about yes. which people yes. debate. There is no debate about the fact of being a hundred percent genetically human being and we've got to stick with well, the scientific uh, you know, facts. But then you get into these great moral tragedies. What would you do if a woman is raped? Uh, would you then say in the first week after the, uh, the uh, conception that there ought not to be an abortion? Ask Ethel Waters about that. Her mother was raped. Well, what would you say about that? I would say that rape is a terrible crime, but we ought to punish the guilty rapist, not the innocent All baby. right, but what do you do? Then you, you, not have, you, you mean, say, in the first week, you would, you would, uh, you would uh, compel this woman to give birth? Uh, on, what, on what basis can you do that? I mean, uh, this is an invasion of her body, and it seems to me a woman has a right of freedom of choice, and you can make a moral case 
that uh, women ought to be permitted to have an abortion under such conditions. A woman has a right of freedom of choice, but she does not have the right to freely kill another innocent okay. human being. And it is a scientific fact that it's another innocent human being well, in her womb. It's not an she innocent doesn't have the right being. to kill it. It's a fetus. It's, it's a not human a, being. It's a, it's fetus. a medical, genetic, and scientific and fact. And it's not that innocent it's human. because uh, well, did she, it sin? Well, it has it, you don't believe in original wait, sin. Wait, you say uh, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, surely the uh, the fetus has invaded her body. It's not entirely uh, entirely innocent. If uh, if someone came here and plugged into you, you say, and said, well, "You're going to stay in this position for nine months." What you're saying is you that she has a right to kill you. it because. It's getting her food from her than any mother after the baby well, is born I, I has mean, the right that, you to know, kill it because still are, getting her a, food from her. In a democratic, free, open, pluralistic society, these are arguable questions. And it's very difficult to say uh, under what point does the fetus become uh, a human being with well, rights. Well, it's not difficult at all. Science is point. There was a subcommittee hearing recently in Washington, and virtually every scientist that came there, including the famous world uh, geneticist Lejeune from France, said that life begins at conception. That's not what something, they're debating about. Something, well, we're not talking about life. Something begins at conception. We're talking about it's human conceptus. life. It's conceptus or it's a fetus, but there's a developmental process. Now, I agree that later in the pregnancy, I would not have a, an abortion unless the life of the mother is in, endangered. And the woman ought to have an abortion early, let's but say in the no first trimester later. or the second trimester. There is no new genetic information added after the there, point of there conception. Is a, there is a developmental process. There is no new genetic information added. Well, but the fetus grows as it it's nourished by the mother. Well, you grow after and you're born. Not, Can we okay. kill people because they're small? Of course, you know, you can argue. <laughs> Well, uh, well, but uh, a fetus is not is not a person. That's the well, point. now wait a minute. Person I mean, is defined by what? The fetus is a potential as, person. It's as, as if you would argue that one ought not to practice con contraception because the sperm or the egg is a potential person. The who same said sense. a fetus well, is not a person? Philosophers and theologians. I'm not talking about religion yeah. and philosophy. I'm talking about cold Personal hard scientific later. facts that you it's like not as cold, a humanist. It's not cold hard scientific facts. On the, this point, a moral attitude is 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 applied to the development. It's not a question process. of moral attitude. I think if we took a survey, Paul, wouldn't you agree that everyone, 98 to 99 percent of the country, would answer this question in the affirmative? Do you believe it's wrong to kill an innocent human being? Right. Wouldn't you say 98% of the country believe it's wrong to kill an innocent human being? Uh, yes, now, of course, but the, question, okay, well, the definition is whether the fetus is an innocent human being. That's right. Let me finish. Then there's only really one question left, and that's a factual question. Is a fertilized ovum a human being? And when 23 chromosomes from a male sperm unite with 23 chromosomes from a female ovum, it is a scientific fact that that 46 chromosome is a human being. It's, it's not potential. It, it is potential. It's a human life with great potential. It is not a potential it is, it, life. Well, it is, it, it is not fully developed as a potential human Neither being. Neither is a you could argue, you could argue fully that developed. You could argue against birth control, as many devout Catholics have, because either the sperm or eggs are control. potential human beings. They use the same argument, that therefore this is a sin to do that. So where, at what point do you, do you split the developmental process and say, does, does human personality begin and We're does not it not about begin? Human In any That's case, it seems to me women about. have rights and men should not simply impose their standards on women and say, I you must agree. carry, you must carry this fetus to term no matter what, even if it's a product of rape, Paul, even if it's a deformed fetus as a when test you're talking about imposing even if your life is your moral state. standard on someone else and your religious beliefs, that unborn, innocent human being is having someone else impose their standards on them and not allowing them to live. I think that's immoral. Well, but it's an open question. There are many people who disagree with you that that is an innocent All right, let me, let me jump in here. Definition. And that you're is that uh, your definition. in Roe versus Wade, I want to uh, pull a point out of what you're talking about here. Abortion was legalized because the state saw no reason to protect the life of the unborn. They redefined personhood there. They didn't look at the scientific that's, evidence. That's not true, John. The Supreme Court said that people will disagree theologically and metaphysically about when human life or human personality begins. The, and because the court and says the state has right no interest or conscience. right to protect it. But, but then they said because people, honest people disagree on this point, therefore the individual ought to decide whether or not she wants no, no, no. to have an abortion They said or because it's not a sufficient value to the state. And what, I'm, what I want to draw out of, what I want draw out of this, Paul, is the fact is that when you have a secular state like you're talking about with your values that do not have any absolutes that we get caught in this kind of thing that personhood can be defined just like it was in Hitler's time 
that when you have relative values and you have no absolute, you have no God over the law, the Supreme Court can take a, take a check among themselves and say, this is what we're going to decide. There is no standard. Well, I think that uh, what the Supreme Court was ar arguing for was the principle of freedom of conscience and liberty of conscience, and it recognized that in our democratic society, people will disagree. All 50 states and it therefore afforded to women the right it. of freedom of choice for those who wished an abortion. All 50 states had already passed a law forbidding it, and it was only by an injunction of the Supreme Court on their highly thrones up there that decided that the whole United States was wrong. What Paul is saying is right. The Supreme Court said the right of privacy comes over the right to life. And that's absolutely absurd. You don't have the right privately to kill children in your basement. If it's a human being, the right of privacy never takes precedence over the right to The right to of life. privacy and is the right of a woman over her own body. But a fetus is not part of her body. A fetus could be male. She's female. Has its own blood type. Has its own uh, brain wave from 40 days on, days on. You take a black embryo and transplant it into a white womb, and that woman will have a black baby. It's not part of her body. It's an individual human being of its own. And the last time the Supreme Court said somebody wasn't a person was in 1857 when they said blacks weren't persons. And it took 11 years to reverse that. We've been 13 years with this tragedy, and it's time we reverse it. The Supreme Court did not say... The Supreme Court neither affirmed nor denied whether or not uh, a fetus was a person. It said this was an open question. That's wrong, What it Paul. did affirm was the defense of women against the effort. I have read it very carefully. It was a defense of women against the effort by men or I the state to impose anybody out pregnancy. To go down to your library and get Roe versus Wade freedom. and read it, and you'll see that what he said is wrong. The Supreme Court said you are not a person before All right, we got some born. questions right here.